Okay, so now we're getting ready for the stain. So I have everything sanded down and everything cleaned up. So the way I did this, it, as you saw kind of a little piece of it earlier, is I used the scrapers to scrape the actual finish off, to scrape the, uh, the remnants of the clear off. And then I sanded everything with a 120 and then went over with 220 grit. Uh, the reason why I used the scrapers is that got a lot of the the actual poly and the just the gunk that was on it and uh, that would clog the sandpaper so that got all the basically the big stuff off and then the sanding went over so we have a few you know these holes here aren't original but you know it is what it is and but you can see let me just grab let me grab the actual top so you can see something that's a little bit larger so here's the top sanded and um, everything's been wiped off with the tack cloth and I just went I don't know if you guys can see it I'll get a, a bit of a closer view here so hopefully both of those are in frame what I just did is I just took a little bit of gold this is the bo very bottom the bottom of the bottom drawer um, I took a little bit of golden oak, so that's golden oak there, stain, and this is early American stain. You can see that's a little bit darker than that. I do kind of prefer the golden oak personally, so we're going to go with that. And, you know, this lip here, it was really hard to get in here uh, to, to, to sand. I had to use a, a file, so we're going to have some marks in there and probably on this round edge, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So, let's go ahead and... Let's get a coat of stain on this. I'm just going to have to put you over to the side here. So just like any other staining operation, get yourself a decent rag, or you can use a foam brush or a regular brush, but you just wipe on. Make sure you get it in all the crevices. Do the top here. on make sure we're everywhere we need to be even the end grain a little bit let it sit there for a few it'll soak in a little bit and then with another clean cloth here you wipe off the excess and there it is so after all of this is done and dried, I think it's going to dry overnight. It's probably end up driving driving for uh, for two days just because that's when I'm going to be able to get to it. We're going to stop putting the uh, polyurethane on it. I will probably do uh, probably about three coats of gloss polyurethane on this, and um, we'll go from there. So let's get this all stained up and uh, kind of just sit it together and see how it looks. Okay, so this is the uh, finish that we achieved. You can see brought out the grain really nice. It's a pretty pretty decent color. Um, so I put the golden oak stain on there and here's a picture of it here after the first staining. All right, I thought it needed a little bit more color so I actually took that uh, early American stain that I have which is one shade darker and I went over it again with that after I allowed the golden oak stain to dry for 24 hours and that particular stain got into the wood grain more and really didn't color the wood a whole lot but it made the grain pop out uh, much much better you can see some of these pieces here they look a lot darker than they do in that picture you just saw. So now we're going to put our polyurethane on here. And I'm going to do three coats. So I'm going to do one coat, let it dry for 24 hours, scuff, scuff it with uh, some 4 aught steel wool, get the nibs off, another coat, and do that three times. The top coat we're going to leave alone uh, unless I have a lot of dust particles in there. So it's going to get three coats of that. The, the best thing I can say to get a good finish, um, use a decent polyurethane. This is this is an alright one. I think these ones come from, I think this comes from Lowe's and not Home Depot or maybe Home Depot and not Lowe's either way. Um, 
the other thing is is when you mix this do not shake it stir it only and the other thing is is to use a uh, a decent brush don't get a cheap brush a decent brush is going to cost you anywhere from 18 to 25 bucks depending on its size but i'll be honest with you if you treat the brush right it's going to last you forever um so just get a decent brush use that and then just go at it so we're gonna do all this in three times 24 hours it's gonna take three three or four days to do this you guys get to skip that and see the finished product when we're done okay so this is the finish we pretty much achieved and what we're doing right now is putting our tags back on so uh, I have pictures obviously of what this was before we started and where everything lived So that lived there this lived here and this lived there and what we're gonna do right now is just put them all back on using the same drive screws that came off we're just gonna use a brass hammer to push them in and if anything these holes will be a little bit tighter because it has some of the varnish in there Obviously, just tap them in like so. You know, these are all the same size drive screws here. So, in case anybody doesn't know what a drive screw is, it looks like a rivet and it kind of has a spiral screw type deal on there. Uh, you'll see these a lot on older lathes and equipment like that. They'll be holding a lot of info tags on. So. What I did with these tags is I cleaned them up with some Scotch-Brite pads. Then I made sure to polish the scratches out. I took some black enamel paint. I put it in all of the indented uh, writing there. And then I sealed it with some varnish. And this black one here, I basically did the opposite. Filled the inside in and then just uh, went with a piece of sandpaper that was on a surface plate and basically scratched off the raised lettering. Okay, so now we're getting ready to do the felt. Uh, I've already cut all the ones for the drawers. They're relatively simple. Uh, Gerstner on the drawers, the only part that is felted is the actual bottom of the drawers, not the perimeter. You can do the perimeter if you want. You have They give you more than enough felt to do that. But uh, the way they were sent from the factory is only the bottom of the drawers, the floor of the drawers, had felt on them, which those are already cut to size. They're rectangles, not that hard to do. Uh, the only parts that had felt on the bottom as well as the sides is the top deck here and the inside cover, which I've already cut to fit. Nothing's glued yet, but uh, we'll get to that as we go. So it's relatively simple. Uh, I like these little really thin Sharpies, the ultra thin Sharpies. They make a, a decent mark on the felt to be able to mark it and cut it so right now we're just measuring this top here and oops, 19 inches there by uh, eight and three eighths or just shy of eight and three eighths now we do have these little reinforcement ribs here these little corners um so this isn't a perfect rectangle the edges will have to be snipped, but that's not a big thing. And since the felt is going to be cut to rim the sides here, you can hide a lot of crimes. This this doesn't really have to be ridiculously perfect. So if you nip the corners a little bit off, that piece of felt that you wrap around the top here should cover that. Now the way that the felt 
gets wrapped around the top. Now I suppose you could cut the bolt, the fabric that they give you lengthwise and get a whole perimeter, but it's usually two pieces. Starts in one corner, wraps around to the other corner, starts again and wraps around to meet. Um, now this box here did not have any felt on it when I bought it. If you are changing the felt, it's very easy to peel off the old felt. It's a, it's a high glue that's underneath there, so all you do is get some warm water, soak the felt down, and it will pretty much peel up in one sheet. I do have a video of doing that on the uh, the 11 drawer Gerstner, which I'll actually put a link on down below. Okay, so I, now I have all the felt cut now, and what we need to do is put on the hardware. Now, we before we put the felt down, we don't need to put on all of the hardware. The only thing that we really need to put on is anything that is attached with these little split rivets because the split rivets get split and pinned underneath the felt. So that is basically the front clasp, the handle, and the hinges. So all that needs to be put on at the very least uh, before we put on the felt. Now when you buy the handle it does come with its own little split rivets but everything else I had to order separately to replace the ones we took out of this. There are two different sizes so just make sure you get the correct size that you have on your box. So we'll do the handle here first and the handle just gets shoved under there. across the camera here. Now I believe at the Gerstner factory I think they have a uh, almost like a like a press that will split and punch these in themselves but it's relatively simple to do yourself. Uh, the biggest thing is just making sure that these little guys are tight to the surface. And I do have to say while this is a decent quality handle the cons physical construction of it, uh, I don't think I have the old one still. Now I must have tossed the old one, but the the physical construction of this, you can see this is what held the old one on. And the old one actually in this little recess had a metal um, tab that fit under everything. This is like really tight in here. I mean it'll work, but the old hardware is a little bit a little bit better and the only problem is is you can't use the old hardware well maybe you can use the old hardware with the new yeah uh, it just doesn't seem if if I use the old hardware with the new handle it just it doesn't seem as secure this seems a lot more like it's able to move in this pocket a lot more so I'm just going to use the new ones again all this comes as a set when you buy the handle and the biggest thing is just making sure that that's flat against the wood. So, what I'm going to do is we'll come in here, grab a flathead, and what I'm trying to do right here is just look where those digs are from the ones that were in there before, and they were at an angle like so. I'm pushing hard underneath, and I know it's kind of hard to see with my hand in the way, but basically pushing hard underneath so that make sure it's flat I got a one two three block here I could probably push against like so and then we're just gonna spread those tabs out like that Again, make sure that we're tight against that wood. Um, you know what? I gotta I wonder actually. Um hmm. Okay, so I set it up on blocks so I can push down and make sure that these are flat. So same thing here. I'm gonna turn it to line up with the grooves that were in it before. And we're just gonna split it. This one here, we're going to split a little more. I'm going to
punch that down tight. Same thing here. Should we're tight against that. And you can see those are nice and tight. I'm going to flip this around and do the same with this side. Okay, so all the hardware is on the main box and all the hardware is on these drawers. Felt is cut. Right now we have to make our glue. So let's go upstairs and prep our glue that we're going to use. Okay, so this is the kit we're going to use. And comes with this instruction book, which I've already read. But it says to heat pot of water to 160 degrees. It gives you a thermometer. Eight ounces of tap water into the bag. And heated water should take about 10 minutes or so for the glue to melt and mix with the water. Okay, so turn the burner on there. Here's our thermometer strip, and it says pass when blue bar turns orange. It's a chunk of blue. Which we're going to take. in a Ziploc bag with eight ounces of water. This is filtered water, just because I have it. Set that aside. Okay, that blue bar turned orange. And just shut it off. There's going to be some thermal carryover, but that's okay. And we're going to submerge that and let that melt. Okay, so oh, as I get water everywhere, I got a bag of baked glue. It's uh, about the color of apple cider, and maybe the consistency of uh, I would say about two percent milk or so there. Um, I did notice that the instructions said it would take about 10 minutes to melt. Uh, this took about maybe double that, uh, maybe 20 minutes. But um, what I ended up having to do is take it out and kind of break it up with my hands, massage the block a little bit to get it off. It wasn't just like melting like an ice cube. Um, but we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is bring this downstairs. I'm going to keep it in the hot water down the cellar because it's... Uh, pretty chilly down there and I don't want that to gel up but if it does gel up then we can just reheat it back up here not a big deal so um let me truck all the stuff back down the cellar and uh we'll get at it they give you little gloves in there and I don't know what size hands these people have but I mean that ain't gonna work Okay, so we got a pair of actual gloves that fit. My glue is just off camera in the pot still over here. Keep it nice and warm. And I have all the felt placed in the... Whoop. Let's put these behind me. So we're going to do just like the instructions say. I'm going to open this sucker up. Oh, that stinks. Oh, yeah. That's a very distinctive smell, that is. Woo! So, basically just says paint it on and press the felt on. So, yeah, it's definitely sticky.
I don't think we need a ton, but I do want to make sure that we're completely covered. Alright, that doesn't look too bad. Place this sucker in there. And as it cools, I should just suck this in. Sorry if I, I'm jiggling you around a little bit. You're attached to my workbench here. Okay, we have one last thing to put on, and that is this sticker. Now, it's still a little sticky, but it's going to fall off. The easiest way I can think of attaching this is with a glue stick. So we're going to give that a shot. Figured this is the most least intrusive. And it should give it enough stickiness just to stick down and stay. And it's been stuck on as a sticker for probably 50 years. So... How much of a stickler do we want to be here? So the old eyeball ain't too far off, is it? She is. Okay, one last thing I am going to do. And so, as I said in a previous video, um, the woman that I have bought this from gave me the name. And obviously, the guy's name is everywhere on the inside of the box. But she said, you can go online and find his obituary. And that's exactly what I did. So, here's an excerpt from his obituary here. You guys can pause it and read it. And that is getting mounted under the drawer. Okay, boys and girls, there she is. One last thing to do. And that is put on the nameplate. And there she is. So, all the drawers are covered. The only thing I got to do is attach the mirror. I don't have um, the little brads were missing, so I just got to get some and attach the mirror. But otherwise, we are pretty much done. So. Locked up. Lock works nice. And we are done with this video. Okay, guys, that's a pretty successful project. I mean, it's not perfect. I've got a few little scratches and drips and everything here, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was. And as much as I would have liked to try to keep it as original as possible or keep the finish as original as possible, it was just flaking off. There was no way I could save what was there and make it look decent. Um, I do have to say, though, if I were to do another one, I would not buy the high glue from Gerstner. It's an absolute gimmick, I, I, in my opinion, after using it. The other 12, uh, 11 drawer rather over there, I used 3M spray adhesive. It's a third of the price. It's easier to control, 
it sticks just as well. It doesn't reek like this stuff. This stuff got everywhere for me. I mean, if maybe if you more practice using it, or it's relatively cold down here too, so it kind of gelled as soon as you put it on. Maybe if you had a warmer environment, it worked better for you. But and honestly, thirty dollars for that block to do one box. It's a little gimmicky. They may use it on their new boxes. They may not. I don't know. I don't know how their new boxes are made. But it's not something I would do again. Uh, but the project is done. Everything's back on there. Everything that came off is back on nice and shiny. And now we can start putting tools in it. And it'll live uh, with my other box. So thanks for watching this video. And we'll see you guys on the next one.